This is the most remarkable of all the works by Boston painter Richard Upton Pickman, entitled The Ghoul. Its most striking feature by far is the unbelievable realism of its technique. Such is the greatness of Pickman's art. One would swear it had been painted from life. It was undoubtedly Lovecraft's passion for astronomy that enabled him to detect those vague cosmic presences milling on the very outskirts of the universe and the endless abysses of the beyond. What gigantic, repulsive anomaly did the Sphinx originally represent? This statue was given to Lovecraft by the famous illusionist Harry Houdini as a token of his thanks in helping him exercise the horror of his Egyptian nightmare. An interesting indicator of the French branch of the Lovecrafts. After a successful escape from the prison of the Doles, I beg your pardon, of Dole, Garnier made for England, where he passed himself off as a Protestant fleeing persecution. On 6 September 1620, he boarded a ship, the Mayflower, sailing for America. Family chronicles, a much favored tradition during the 16th century, were often embellished by charming, naive drawings. This diary, kept between 1560 and 1580 by Kleis van der Heil, is no exception to the rule. This file contains unspeakable drawings from the pen of Goya, who always repudiated their authorship. King Olaf Tregovson, who died in the year 1000, tried in vain to bring Christianity to Norway. He is depicted here clashing with a strange marine creature, a deity venerated by the indigenous peoples. The legacies of sacred art include such admirable works as this detail from the Church of Chauvigny, from the 12th century. It is still unclear what the builders of these cathedrals used as models when sculpting these demons. This crystal was discovered in the ices of Greenland, among strata dating back to the Miocene. It belonged perhaps to a sorcerer from Fool, in the dawn of mankind. It is said that he who stares at it for too long can have strange visions. This tape tells the story of the town of Zebico, destroyed by a strange creeping fog. Telegraph operator John Morgan had been dead for several hours 
when this message arrived. The medical bag of Herbert West appear to the likes of Pasteur or Ambrose Paré. After enlisting as a volunteer in World War I, he worked with enthusiasm wherever others were repulsed by the sight of hurriedly mutilated bodies. His career came to a brutal end with the outcry that accompanied the results of his experiments. It's not easy to break a man's back, especially when he's a New York detective of Irish stock. But it is difficult to lead an inquiry into cosmic evil, as was the case in the Red Hook Affair. These reels contained the greatest fantasy film ever made, The Nameless. It shows horror, the absolute nightmare, in a word, the unspeakable. Unfortunately, this masterpiece by Arnold Keane will remain unfinished, as the director took realism a little too far. This strange statue was discovered among the marshes of New Orleans by Inspector Legras in the course of an eventful inquiry. This ice pick, discovered in 1933, is all that remains of the two climbers, Mallory and Irvine. In 1924, they set off to conquer Everest. Their downfall was perhaps to awaken certain forces. The Nepalese name for Everest is Chomolonga, meaning the goddess mother of the winds. The activity of Cthulhu's worshippers can be the cause of certain regrettable incidents. The schooner La Salle, attacked off Long Island on 17th December 1819, bears witness to this. Discovered in the Irem of antiquity, the nameless city, this lamp was the property of Abdul al Hazred before it was buried inside his tomb. It was extracted from that tomb by Joshua Whipple, grandfather of Ward Phillips, and thus came into the possession of the Phillips branch of the Lovecraft family. Many travelers, among them the celebrated climber Reinhold Messner, have reported sightings of these creatures on the high plateau of Tibet. This unique item is Eric Zahn's Viola da Gamba, this prodigious musician of German origin, who lived on the Rue d'Ossai in Paris, never performed in public. It was rumored that he played only for certain events, a fact not obscured by his tragic disappearance. The safety systems used on the tube London's antiquated subway network may seem archaic. At any rate, there are accidents of, let's say, subterranean origins, to quote Pickman, against which any form of protection would be futile. The reasons for the disappearance of the famous explorer Amundsen are known to us only by virtue of the manuscript found next to the severed head of Robert Drumgold at 87 degrees 
latitude south. His body was never recovered. The Dead Sea Scrolls discovered in 1947 are still kept secret. For some learned men, they are in fact famous narcotic manuscripts. The legend of the Flood, like that of Atlantis, is due to far more ancient realities. In his residence at Relia, Cthulhu influences the dreams of men. Hieronymus Bosch, haunted by strange visions, produced this triptych. The Aztecs hinted of the goddess Orahona, whose hands were webbed. The Orohonis tribes were most probably direct descendants of the Great Old Ones. This statue was offered to Jason Wechter, the Boston music and art critic, shortly before his disappearance. There are eternal cults more ancient than humanity itself. Thus, Ithaqua, the walker of the wind, is known in Canada as Wendigo, a monstrous caribou carried by southern winds. Closer to our climes, this hideous creature is known to children under the name of Father Christmas. Thanks to this strange ring, or because of it, a Mexican worker named Juan Romero was given a role, a cosmic role in a mine in the west of the United States. These objects were found next to the decapitated body of the lamented Halpen Chalmers, it's difficult fighting with weapons such as these when you're condemned by the dogs of Tindalos. A museum worthy of its name simply had to own the sadly infamous Necronomicon, written by the demented Arab Abdul Al-Hazred. This unique copy was the property of Charles Dexter Ward. Thank you.